Ostrehu by Imploding Colon, read by Deathlight. Chapter 20, Survey. I really don't like her hovering around like this. Arnhoof muttered as he marched along. She can totally hear you, Arnhoof. Return up said. The mother won't bother by a Pegasus flying over us like a winged halo. Arnhoof glanced back at the two dozen other ponies marching with leather saddlebags full of heavy equipment. It was morning time. The bright golden sun glittered down through the treetops. As the caravan wove their way down the mountainside, clustered with forest, Arnoff in particular was pulling one of the wagons as he flared his nostrils in the spring air. Just where does a pony get sport in a mane that fruity anyways? All ponies from the west are crazy looking. Only the ones that make you look bad trying to start the fire. Hey, shut up! The caravan was awash in chuckling voices. Fultart wove in and out of the solid line of travelers. He carried very little on his body, so he could easily reach the front or the rear of the group in a blink. In order to observe the trek's progress, he walked with disinterest past Iron Hoof and the other chatting stallions. As he brushed past Goldplate, he gave the young pony a side glance. Goldplate was struggling to hold up barely half the weight of the other equines, sweating and wincing visibly in the non-stop march. Upon the elder's glance, he did his best to hide any sign of buckling. Once Full Trot trotted out of visual range, Goldplate let out a huge breath, and his shoulders sagged. Meanwhile, Iron Hoof was still rumbling. It's a bad sign, I'm telling you. Her presence here doesn't bode well. Remember that last time two years ago? When we had a random traveler join our caravan? We got washed up by a flash flood. This is a Pegasus, Iron Hoof. The last of our concerns to be in compliant weather. But what if she's cussed? You see that golden necklace she wears? Perhaps she pilfered it from a forsaken chamber of pony souls. You know, I can, like, totally hear you, right? Rainbow flew low enough so the caravan could see her smirk. Arnav briefly tripped, nearly being ran over by his own wagon. Several ponies around him chuckled as he blushed and gazed at the blue blur of Rainbow Dash soaring overhead. Rainbow skimmed over the crowd, lifting up and bounced from branch to branch. As she grazed the roof of the forest, she paused on a particularly large tree, staring down at the landscape ahead of them. On the horizon was a large structure, still billowing from its gray mass with smoke. Below it, the mountain gave way to rolling valleys and lush green trees and shimmering blue streams. Squinting, Rainbow got a decent survey of the terrain. Her wings twitched upon seeing something. She gazed down, and just the direction that the caravan was heading. She dove and flew alongside the marching ponies. Hey, where's your boss? Huh? Goldplate could barely breathe. Rambodash hovered alongside the blonde stallion. What's your deal, dude? It looks like you just ran a thousand miles. Never mind that. What do you want to see Fultroth for? Cause if you think you're exhausted now, just wait till this afternoon. I don't get it. We're taking the long way to get to your destination. How do you know that? You're not from around here. Let's just say I learned a thing or two about how the earth works in my flight here. If you think you can convince him to take a detour, be my guest. Goldplate muttered. He pointed ahead. He's at the front of the caravan. Thanks. For what? Your permission. Rimarash gave a wink and was gone. Goldplate sighed. He briefly stumbled on a tree root, bumping into Red Turnip. Hey, watch it, Pipsqueak. Mmm, sorry. 